What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we make our way out of the Aurora. We're just trying to get up out of here. Uh, we got a power compensator, which is great. That was actually one of the main reasons to swing back over here and risk death at the hands of the, Revi or the Leviathan Reaper. I don't think there's anything else to do over here. I don't. I really sincerely, I feel like we've done what there is to be done here. Although I do hope that they add more objectives like this. Like more random things that need to be done. This right here, I feel like they should have put some puzzles in here. Maybe some stuff to like dick you around. Like maybe like you needed like power cells in order to open like certain doors and stuff like that. I, I feel like they should have made this take a little longer. But aside from that, I don't know. I'm okay with it. Uh, bad things are about to happen. I can virtually assure you. I mean, technically I could just throw myself into the ocean and hope for the best yeah let's do it why not what's the worst that could happen it's pretty rare that the Leviathan Reaper is like inside this little area that's the only reason I say it is because it doesn't it doesn't happen that often and so I'm not really afraid of it happening there's a heat signature back over that way that we need to take a look at. This would be the point in the game where you start to find like signals and stuff like that that start to point you around to all the interesting areas, all the interesting areas on the map. Let's go ahead and get picked up here. What the hell was that red thing it just did? Did you see that? It did like a red fiery thing. I thought we were like exploding or something. Ow! Oh, there's fire falling on me. That's good. Let's not be inside this debris field. How about that? Yeah. I'm not convinced we will ever get our ship back if I die over here. Alright. Well, there are other activities for us to participate in. But for right now, we've gotten ourselves clear of the danger zone. We've finished off de-radioactivifying, I don't know, we've removed the radiation from the Aurora, so that's good. That's a thing that we shouldn't have to worry about for too much longer, meaning we can get rid of our rad suit, and we can start using the other suits, which are actually pretty good. There's like a rebreather suit. There's one suit that allows you to do some pretty cool stuff, like it reclaims water from your body as you swim. There's a bunch of other different utilities that are fun to play around with, and you can't really do that until... You get rid of the radiation because you need the radiation suit all the time while you're adventuring. So anyway, wow, we're going down deep right now. Oh, it's because we're in Kush zone. Okay. That's acceptable. I kind of want some of those hoop fish to put inside my aquarium. I feel like that'd be legit. You used to be able to release fish inside of your, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you used to be able to release fish inside the Cyclops, and they would just swim around the Cyclops. Like, the Cyclops counted as an aquarium. They would just fly through the air. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, I think it's telling me I'm about to collide with something below me, not above me. I do wish I could move the, the pitch of the lights. Like, I could adjust them and be like, nyeh, 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 and drag them around a little bit. I'd be happier about it. We're not going to run into anything. Stop panicking, collision detection. I promise you, everything is going to be all right. We do need to go back to the Reaper zone, but we're hungry right now, so I need to get my character fed. And then I would suggest also outfitting this with similar sundries, like basically just putting some grow beds in here, some little things like that so that you can travel around without having to worry too much about being... Uh, let's go for the direct route, I guess. Yeah. I rarely go to the other side of the Aurora, by the way. I know people have talked about it, but you can go to the other side. Like, the map goes to the opposite side of the Aurora, and there's stuff over there. There's, like, other biomes and things like that. We will obviously be doing that in this playthrough. Around the back, you should find a Reaper as well, I think. I'm surprised we didn't find one around the front. He used to actually be a lot more aggressive about guarding the front of the ship. And so I don't know if he's just wandered out of the way over time, or... 
if he's not there anymore. I'm not really sure about the distinction there. Can't really see what zone we're in. I see creep vine over there. So we're probably good along that way. I might just upgrade the pressure compensator on the sea moth next so that we can take it out on excursions. As you can tell, the Cyclops is kind of slow. Like, you don't always want to take the Cyclops out. Like, it's a cool toy. Like, no lie, it's a fun thing to have. But at the end of the day, I actually think the sea moth is more diverse. And now that it can protect itself, the big, big, big draw... The big draw of the Cyclops back in the day was that the Reaper Leviathan could not hurt it. Now that the sea moth has protections, like the shock field and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to bring this thing around wide, but these shallows can be pretty ridiculous to navigate in this thing. I'm piloting an underwater semi. It's weird that we can see our base from this far off through collision, but hey, I don't mind it. I will take it. I just figured we should give this thing some pilot time so you guys could see what it could do at the beginning of the next episode because we've had this thing and piloting it around is cool. I just prefer the sea moth. I really do. It gets around faster. It also adds a little bit of risk. Like, this thing cannot be hurt by anything, and whereas if I'm swimming around in the sea moth, I can still be hurt by stuff, you know? Make things a little bit more tense. Finally be able to get rid of this radiation suit, which I'm pretty happy about. Don't know where I'm going to park this thing. Oh, you can see my locker through the walls, too. That's kind of weird. Huh. How odd. Alright, so the upgrade panel, I think, is on this side. Back around here. Yeah, there it is right there. And we should be able to take that and slot that in. So it gets 400% power efficiency now. Which means that we should see... Uh, let's swap it out with one of the fresh ones, I guess. Might as well. We're already here. I think it probably only drained off that one, though. Cool. So having only drained off that one, let's run ourselves back inside. And now that we've completed one of the big projects in the game, like one of the major milestones, it's sort of up to us to decide what we want to do now. It really is. It's up to us to decide what we want to do now. And that can really be anything and everything there are still a lot of things for us to find and for us to farm for there's a as far as i know there's a cyclops dock now or something like that or like a cyclops upgrade panel that you can get that allows you to do the exact same thing for the cyclops that you can do for the sea moth i don't know if there's a dock like there is for the sea moth but i'm pretty sure there's some kind of hab that you can use or something like that Either way, we should probably track those down and figure out what biome we can get those from. Inside of here, let me go ahead and flip some water. There we go. I will more than likely keep a bunch of water and food stored inside of our... And not you, Squishy. Squishy, the minion of destruction, entropy, chaos, and death, will have nothing to do with the Cyclops. There we go. That should help out a little bit. We still got our, well, the pressure compensator, a ridiculous quantity of power cells. My next suggestion would be that we make the power cell recharger so that if we go on extended trips in these Cyclops, we can actually charge up the power cells. So we need a computer chip, a copper wire, glass, and titanium. None of which I feel like I really have. That thing is a lot larger than I expected it to be. Okay, I'm going to put it in right there. I think I have the titanium. I don't have the glass, so we're going to have to make that happen one way or another. The copper wire should be easy enough to do. 
Did I get two of those? Okay, I just wanted to make sure I clicked twice. Put that in right there. Computer chip should be easy enough. Got you. A little bit of silver. A little bit of quartz. Perfecto. Oh, but it wants the glass next. Okay, well, let's go track the glass. You know, for some reason, seeing that thing floating in the water freaks me out. I don't know why. Like, it's on my side. It's my vehicle. And yet, when I see it in the water, I'm just like, ah, stay away. I don't know. It's something instinctual deep down inside. You see, like, a large critter in the water. And it's like, yep, I am out of my depth right now. I'm not trying to be punny, but, you know, I am messing with that thing. I... Got titanium, and we are actually on the lookout. For cave systems or anything else. Well, shit. It was my hope that maybe we would find something cool inside of there. Well, nope, that's what I get for exploring. Fine, then. See if I ever do that again. See if I ever expand my horizons inside the confines of this game ever again. Mm -mm -mm. I need quartz. I don't need, like, any of this shit. Where's the Aurora at? I know I leave quartz laying around, like, in this direction. If I can avoid getting bit by a stalker, that'd be really, really excelsior. Like, it would change my life. By making it much, much less bitten. Getting bitten by creatures sucks, man. I had a friend that got bit by an alligator lizard when we were kids. And damn, that thing took a chunk out of him. If you don't know what an alligator lizard is, it's a lizard that lives here that bites. And so they call it an alligator lizard. And so they're like the size of like an iguana when they get bigger. It kind of depends. They can be small or they can be big. They can be like the size of a blue belly or they could be enormous. And the problem is, kids get them mixed up with blue bellies, and so kids catch blue belly lizards around here all the time. And the problem is that they kind of look similar. They both kind of got the same camouflage pattern and all that kind of stuff. And so your average kid sees one and is like, Oh, a giant blue belly! I'm going to catch that. It's going to be amazing. All my friends are going to think I'm the coolest. And then they do that, and then it bites them, and then they're just like, Ah! But yeah. Hand bleeding all over the place. Don't mess with lizards, kids. Don't mess with lizards. Some of them are defensible. Some of them have armaments ready to go. Ready to fight at a moment's notice to destroy the human menace. Oh, I went past where I was. Oh, okay. What are these right here? Can I scan these? I like the music in this game. Makes me feel like I'm doing epic sci-fi shit. Like turning quartz crystals from the bottom of the ocean into giant submarines. Hey, I think my preference would be... Oh, man, we're almost out of battery. Let's go ahead and keep this thing trucking. I don't know if it slows down, but it feels like it slows down to me once it gets to low battery. I don't know if that's actually how it works. It just feels that way to me. I hate it when people say that about, like, scientific stuff. They'll be like, listen, I know what the science says, but to me, it just feels like it's not true. I'll be like, but the science already says it is. We just did the regression. We Statistically, it, I've just got a gut feeling. You've got a gut feeling? What does a gut feeling have to do with the fact that we've got published studies? Huh. Suppose you could make some argument for published studies from biased sources... And that would be the gut feeling, but I don't know. What if it's unbiased? Can I berate your gut feeling and just be like, no, your gut feeling is wrong? Not just wrong, but like super wrong? I don't know. There are things in this world that bother me. Ignoring the science is one of them. It's like we went to all this effort, 10,000 years of human history to accumulate to this point, and now we're just going to disregard it because it's inconvenient. I'm like, damn it. Humans, why you be the way you be? I'm having a hard time thinking of a habitat that would be large enough to hold this damn thing. 
Like, we would have to create, like, a big-ass hallway coming out of the top of here to go all the way out and over to here and then put it in just so we could dock this thing. I just don't know if that's the way that I want to get down. Alright, so I got the stuff for the glass. We got the stuff for the glass. The stuff for the glass. The stuff for the glass. Gonna get that stuff in your ass when you're melting it all day, all day. How much course do I have left? Three. I will save the remainder. Sometimes you need raw quartz for stuff. For computer chips, an example. It's always computer chips jamming me up like that, so... There's the rest of our stuff. Get this thing built. And there it is. So I assume this functions the exact same way that everything else functions. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. I'll recharge that battery right now. I would love to get the... It's kind of cool how it flips down right there. Although it vibrates too. You see that? It moves. Huh. So Cyclops upgrades. The only Cyclops upgrade we really have right now is the reinforcement module. Which appears to rearrange the hull's atomic structure to increase safe diving depth by extreme amounts. However, we need the first pressure compensator, which I don't have. And we need to do an absurd level of farming to get that thing done. Like truly, we need a ridiculous amount of materials in order to get that done. As far as... Upgrading the sea moth goes though. That appears to be very, very doable. So let's get on it, shall we? We've got some time to take care of here. I'm sorry, some time to kill. So I figure we're carrying around too much shit with us, is what I figure. I gotta put some things somewhere. Welcome aboard. Systems online. Throw that in there. Throw those in there because I'm not going to need them in here. Throw you in there. You in there. Actually, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll hold on to that one just in case. Pressure compensator can go in there, though. The welder's about to need some new... Uh, the welder... May very shortly need a new battery. We've been using it for the duration of an entire playthrough, so it wouldn't surprise me. Let me eat one more time before we bounce out. I like to keep my regeneration ticking while we're in the region. I could just make a medkit fabricator, but I'm lazy. I know you were expecting some complex reason for why... I need to make said thing, but no, it's just because I'm lazy. And then we'll also make a grow bed on there. We'll give that before we start farming out for the next pressure compensator. I would suggest we get a grow bed going inside the Cyclops. At least growing like a lantern fruit tree. So that when the time comes, we can actually feed ourselves and go on extended journeys inside this thing without having to stop off for munchies every five seconds. Now, where I want to build this... I canna say. Actually, this looks like a good enough spot as any. I mean, we do an interior grow bed, like, right... Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it blocks floor space right there. Hard to tell if that's truly straight. Looks good to me. And then I would just put the lantern fruit in here. And once that grows, we'll have a pretty safe supply of feed the entire time. We'll be looking good. 
Meanwhile, hopefully that stays where it's supposed to stay. There used to be a bug where when you logged off or you quit the game, it would disappear on you. And it was upsetting. I suppose we should probably make the colors the same as everything else, right? We should make it match. And so we get it to be red. Stripe 1 will be like a grayish color. Stripe 2... Make it black, in all honesty. And then the name. We name... We'll call it the NCS Battle Baggins. No! Fine. Battle Baggins? There we go. Cool. Done. The Battle Baggins. Even though it doesn't battle. Let's see how we did with the color scheme. I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Uh, I think we gotta change like some of the. Uh... If we get that to glow red instead, and there, there's some little modifications I would make. Oh look at that! It's still orange. It's just when you get up close, it's changing it to black. That's an interesting bug. I do not envy the people that have to run down these bugs and figure out like what the hell is going on with their software. Don't envy them at all. I hate bug fixing. Bug hunting and debugging, oh my god, this is the worst. Just in there trying to figure out how to replicate like this obscure thing that happens on like one guy's PC when he plays your game, but it doesn't happen to anybody else. You're just like, oh my god, this is my life now. I will pick up quartz along the I will pick up quartz along the way while we're over here, because I know we're gonna need it. I still have many, many observatories to build. Actually, two more observatories to build, and if we don't get on that, I'll feel like I haven't done a thing that I've set out to do in my life. And I like to accomplish the things I set out to do in my life. I really sincerely do. That deep feeling of satisfaction when you pull something off that everybody says that you couldn't. Uh, you gotta use your best judgment, though. It could go either way. Like, I know people still working on projects for... Years and years and years they've said are going to work. And it clearly is not going to work. And yet they just keep working. you got to learn to read the field. you got to learn to read the field. Don't waste your time on something unproductive. Unless it's for fun. If it's for fun, then do you, boo-boo. Oh, we're already full up again. Okay. Well, I suppose since uh, that's all finished off... Let's head back to base. We'll drop this stuff off. We're essentially out of time anyways. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. It's always a blast to have you all here with me as we hang out for a little while. I'm Daddy C. I will see you all in tomorrow's episode. How you do, everybody?